Hi folks, today I will show you how to print and assemble this walking robot, which can be operated from any smartphone. Link to the project is in description as always. Here you can find links to the original projects that I have used as a base for my own one. The firmware is from this project and that is genuine. Lex models are from another project. It is also based on the first one, but the guys did not only adapt 3D models, but also spent some time on the firmware and added a lot of commands. The only downside is that Bluetooth BLE 4.0 module is required, which unfortunately I do not have. I found the original frame boring, so it was decided to use this model, which is nothing less but a Volkswagen T1 minibus. I printed all details with PETG plastic, but any other filament can be used as well. Let's get down to business. Apart from the printed details, you'll need the following. 12 SG90 servo motors with screws and arms that usually come as a set. Needless to say that Arduino Nano is required together with extension board for connecting servo motors. You need this board exactly since built-in converter is rated at 2 amps and it somehow does the job. Boards with less powerful converters are not appropriate. You can find the link on the project page. You also need a battery with sufficient current output, for instance Lee Polymer or Lee Ion with 6 or 12 volts voltage. Finally, you'll need a HC06 Bluetooth model for remote control. We start the assembly with the frame. One part of the joint is mounted on the servo motor, second part requires an axle. 12 pieces in total. 4 with square base, which are inserted in the grooves on the housing, and 8 with rectangular base for feet. By the way, do not rush and install arms to servo motors, they are installed in the last turn. Now you need to connect servo motors to the board. For that you need to use pins from D2 to D13. You can see connection order on the screen. Now we connect Arduino Nano to our PC and load leg in its sketch. Then we install the nanoboard to the intended place and connect power line. All servers should set in their assigned positions and will work on hold. Now it's time to install all arms, but not in just any order. You will need to give legs a certain shape. First two parts of the leg have to be installed straight across the side face of the frame. Third one should be turned by 90 degrees. Of course, it should be close to ideal. Practically, the splines or servers will not allow you to make everything ideal. Deviation is always there, this are the way from the correct position. Speaking of which, I do not recommend to use these servers. These are cheapest ones and cost 1 or 120 and guess what? These are complete rubbish. They are poorly manufactured and die for no reason. Higher priced servers are better and if you want to buy them choose with metal gearbox. For example, Tower Pro MG90 servos. Now we disconnect the nano board and upload the main sketch from PC. But prior to this you'll need to install a couple of libraries for Arduino IDE. By the way, I must say thanks to the author for the excellent firmware. This is not just a sketch of recorded movements for a certain size of levers, there is an algorithm where you can make constants. These are the sizes of the legs and the length of the base. All dimensions are taken along the server axis in millimeters. I left comments in the form of the Lex parts names in the original project. It is measured in the same way along the servo axis. And since we are allowed to change the contents, it means we can build a bigger robot, with more powerful servos and all that stuff. 
Now we load the sketch and return the board to the place. It's time to work with the wiring. I have assembled the wires with cable ties. The overhanging items need to be placed inside the housing. Connect the Bluetooth module. Extension board has separate terminal strip for the module. It should be connected according to this scheme. Now we can get busy with the frame. I have printed the module as it is, just then scaled it to the desired size. But cables and terminals were standing in the way, bumping into the bottom, so I had to cut it almost completely. I also tried to modify the 3D model of the frame, but it didn't work. So I had just to raise the frame height for a few millimeters and nothing will stand in the way. Having glued the stands, I decided to make some sort of windshields. And there was just a transferred plastic sheet on hand. I cut it into strips in size and stuck them with the super glue. It turned out like that. Plastic in some places turned white from the drips of super glue. And in order to fix this, I tried to cover all transparency on both sides with liquid plastic, which is intended to cover and protect printed circuit boards. And suddenly it helped. I covered the roof with dichloroethane in order to make the details of black PETG glossier. Now we should return to the question why not to cover it with paint? Let's try to paint some parts and close the issue of painting raw models once and for all. I will create and upload videos of processing and painting decorative models. And I just want to show what happens if you do not bother with processing. This is what came of it. It doesn't look very decent to be honest. Even the thick paint created for brush application spreads over the glossy surface and layers. Overall, it's not worth spending time on that. Now a little about control. I have downloaded some of the most popular programs for remote control via Bluetooth from the Play Market. But only one works fine and surprisingly, it's the one that the creator of the original design and firmware recommended. It's called Bluetooth SPP Pro. Turn on our robot and run the program. Select the module HC06 from the list of Bluetooth and connect. When you connect for the first time, you may need to enter a password. Usually it is 1234 or 4 zeros. We chose a keyboard mode. Here we have 12 customizable buttons. In the upper right, in the drop down menu, select button set and press the button that you want to configure. Above is the name of the button. Then comes three options for sending commands. Button down, the command is sent by pressing the button once. By the way, the list of comments is in the sketch itself. The first digit is the command number, the second is the number of repeats. It can be changed in commands from 1st to 6. For example, enter the command W11. The characters are entered with spaces. If you put another number instead of the second one, for example 5, then after pressing the button, the program will automatically send 5 commands in a row, and the robot will take 5 steps forward. It is time to perform test drive. We hook up battery and assemble the frame. As I have said before, cheap servers die very quickly, so do not put load on them when it's not needed. This is what controls looks like in practice. Click once, one command, three clicks, three commands are sent, and so on. Now let's try changing the type of command to hold. We press the button and commands are sent one after another. Now it is worth considering the time to execute a command. Because of the delay and with the long hold, commands can be sent for some time after the button is released. Therefore, this method is not very convenient. Our robot worked only for a couple of minutes and it's already noticeable how the body dives down during the step. And the robot begins to drag its legs. This means servers are already heated up and not working at full capacity. Once again, do not take this crap. Buy high-quality servers with metal gearboxes. They will last much longer and save you nerves. 
Now let's find what is faster, a robot or a simple mechanical walker. Three, two, one, zero. Thank you for watching, if you like the video press likes and subscribe to the channel not to miss new videos because the coolest projects are still ahead. Good luck to everyone and see you soon!